Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to my uh, humble little shop here. Um, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, it's uh, been a little bit since I've done another video, so I figured I'd throw uh, another one up here real quick. Nothing exciting to the viewers probably, but it is to me and the wife. We've uh, recently made an addition here to our shop. <laughs> um, actually a couple of deletions in addition. I sold a couple of our bikes and replaced it with one. So. Um, this is the newest addition to the uh, uh, to our stable here. So um, I recently had a uh, had a 2010 Dyna Wide Glide for about five years or so now, and I've done a lot of work to that bike, tricked it all out, had a lot of fun on that bike. Um, it was just a stripped down Harley, basically kind of the no frills, bare knuckles, whatever you want to call it. Some people call them bar hoppers. I don't drink, I don't go to bars, so I just called it my hot rod. That was my uh, fun bike when I, I went back and forth to work and when I didn't have the wife on with me. Um, she enjoyed riding it, well, for the first couple years we had it, um, other than the little small pillion on the back seat wasn't really comfortable for her. Um, ladies, you probably just know what I'm talking about. You ride, on the, you put up with that little seat, bar of soap my wife called it, you put up with that little seat just because you want to go ride with your husbands or boyfriends, and we appreciate it. But it wasn't really comfortable for her. We kept, my wife and I kept talking and saying, oh, our son, when we get our son out of college and get him kind of set off in life, we would uh, upgrade to a bagger, or maybe a, a more touring, a bigger touring bike, so it was more suited for two, two up, but I'd keep my hot rod for back and forth to work and for cruising around. I couldn't really see myself as a big bagger type bike guy and it just didn't appeal to me back then but over the last course of the last few years they become more and more appealing about three years ago a good friend of mine uh, had a 2004 ultra classic that he had he had owned since new it only had 30,000 miles on it he made me a smoking deal on it so i bought it it was a little ahead of the schedule but seeing as how the deal i got on it we were able to pick it up before my son graduated college and my wife referred to that as the barker lounger so we had a hot rod and a barker lounger um, the bike was, the both bikes were great. Uh, for touring, that Ultra Classic just knocked down the, the miles and it was a fun bike. It just was, didn't have the performance that I really thirst for. So, um, anyway, last year and a half or so, I've been kind of kicking around maybe, selling the two and getting one, but I really have just had my heart set on a CVO. I wanted that big 110 cubic inch motor. Um, I had a very tight criteria of things I was looking for. Um, I, about nine months ago I started looking. I wanted a 2010 Ultra CBO and I wanted it in the uh, burnt amber and hot citrus colors. They only had about four colors that year and this was my favorite color that year. Um, so that's what I was looking for. I had a very narrow specific um, bike I was looking for and in this area they just weren't very prevalent. So it took me nine months to find the bike. I finally found it. It is exactly what I wanted. Um, I've had it only a few weeks now. Uh, I've done uh, Reinhardt exhaust, uh, Power Commander 5 um, tuner. Um, the thing flat hauls ass. I love it. The bike is fun to ride. Um, I thought I'd missed my wide glide, but this has that exhilarating performance that I like, and it has the custom paint and everything I had on my white glide, but yet it still is a comfortable bike like our 04 Ultra. This has the newer chassis, which I really like. So it was a win-win. Um, we lucked out and sold our other ones very quickly as soon as I located this bike. So it was, uh, it was a pretty uh, quick exchange once, we, once everything came together. So I want to welcome our new bike to the family. And um, there's nothing major going on right now. I just uh, another reason why I wanted the 2010, there's a couple things I wanted to do to it. I'm just going to do a normal service. The previous owner said he had just serviced it, or ha excuse me, the previous owner said he had just had it serviced a few hundred miles prior to me buying it. But I'm kind of anal about things, so when I get anything, no matter what it is, I just go through and service it and bring it up to, to spec um, the way I want it done. So I'm going to go ahead and dump all the fluids out of the engine, the tranny, the primary. Um, and go through and, and put the fluids that I like to run in it. So, one, a couple of things I was going to do was the comp, Screaming Eagle Compensator on these Ultras. 
Um, however, that was one of the other reasons why I wanted the 2010, because the 2010 Screaming Eagle already had the Screaming Eagle compensator in it. The 2011 on up, they come factory. 2011 on up was a little out of my budget. So that's another reason why I wanted a 2010. Um, however, I do not like the um, automatic adjusting primaries, uh, the chain tensioners in the primary that Harley puts on. Um, on a lighter bike like my Dyna, um, things like that, the, you can get away with them, I, I feel, and I say this is just my personal opinion, I feel you can get away with them okay, um, but on a big heavy bike, this bike's 900 pounds, with me and my, I'm not, I'm not a small guy, and with me and my wife on it, and you start doing aggressive downshifts, um, I have seen these big bikes come, that I've worked on come through my shop, that I've pulled the primaries apart and the chains are so tight they're like a piano string. And I, the only thing I can contribute to is on an aggressive hard downshift with the weight of the bike, weight of two riders and everything, it preloads that so hard and so rapidly that it actually, rather than just compensating one tooth, one click on that self adjuster, it actually will maybe go two or possibly even more if you get a, you know, the conditions are just right. Um, it really negates the whole point of the factory spec that Harley's put had out there for decades of 5 eighths to 7 eighths on their primary chain with a 10 pound preload. So I looked at the Scream and Eagle manual adjuster, which basically is just like an old, um, an old Harley, an old version of the Harley tensioner. Uh, but I really, I, I've used a few of these Baker Attitude chain tensioners now, and I really like them, so I, as soon as I bought the bike, I went ahead and ordered one of those for it, and it showed up the other day, so I'm going to go ahead and dump all the fluids, pull the primary apart, put the uh, manual chain slack adjuster in the primary, put the fluids, I, I usually run Mobile One um, V-Twin Oil 2050 in the engine, I run the Formula Plus in the primary, that's Harley Davidson fluid, and I run the Spectro 6 in the transmission. I actually like the, the actual gear oil for the transmission versus um, Harley says either to run uh, their Sin 3 or their Formula Plus in all three. Not bad mouth or anything, I just, that's just not my personal opinion. I, I have a fluid that I like to run, that's what, that's what I'm going to run it. That's what I run on all my other bikes. What I run in customers' bikes when they bring them in, that's what I'm going to run in mine. So Spectro 6 has been out for a while. They're actually the ones that built, that, that designed the fluid. Excuse me, let me back up. Baker Transmissions had Spectro 6 design the fluids for their transmissions. The Harley transmissions are kind of, the new six speeds are kind of a knockoff of the Baker. Baker's been using that oil forever. I've had good, I've, I've heard good things about it. I've used good things about it. I've used it for a couple years now. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in my transmission. Again, 2050 Mobile, one V-Twin air-cooled oil, 2050 in the engine, Spectro 6 in the transmission, and the Formula Plus in the primary. You can run, I know according to the specs and everything, they say you can run the same fluid in all three. Um, I just, that's just my personal opinion, I don't like to do that. So, um, the first part here is pretty basic. I'm not gonna bore you on the video. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the floorboards off and get access here to the primary. And I'll probably hurry up and start dumping the uh, fluids real quick out of the primary tranny and engine. And then I'll, so I'm going to stop the video and do that real quick and then I'll bring you back in when I actually get into the primary. Alright, so I've got the floorboards off. I've got all the, uh, the derby cover is 27, a tor a 27 Torx. So pull those off. Be careful, sometimes they, they, um, they won't, they'll actually fall off and pull that last bolt. So be uh, pretty much careful on that. So you don't drop your nice uh, chrome or custom uh, derby cover. Um, I shouldn't have to mention this, but I'm going to anyway. You've got some long bolts, uh, one, two, three, four of them, around here, around the crankshaft end. The other ones are all the same length. Please make sure you take note, take note. I can only go in one way, but just make sure you uh, kind of pay attention to where they go for, for reassembly purposes. And I'm going to uh, be a little cautious pulling this cover off because I just rode the bike to work today and got home and everything's a little warm. So I'm going to uh, see if I can do this without burning the shit out of my uh, very heat sensitive hands there.
and bend down. So I'm going to lay this over here in a towel so it doesn't get scratch the chrome. And there is, you can see that actually isn't as tight as some of them I pulled apart. It's not. It's still tighter in the specs. It's supposed to be 5 eighths to 7 eighths with about 10 pounds of force. And there's. Whoo! Chain's a little warm. <clears throat> so if I just take a measurement right there, I'm going to adjust it to where one and a quarter from there to the bottom of the. or from the, the underside of this machined edge. There's one and a quarter. Pull out. There's one and three eighths. Or excuse me, one and an eighth and one and three eighths. So that's only a quarter of an inch. So that is much tighter than it should be. That's well outside the range of what it should be. So, needless to say, um, I'm going to let this cool off and uh, get the cover and a few things like that cleaned up. Um, while, I'm, while I'm here, I also like to look at things like the sprocket teeth, check for any, any obviously that are missing, which you probably feel them, but just look for wear marks, burrs. I also like to look at the um, pinion gear on the starter motor and the uh, flywheel gear. Make sure all the teeth look good. There's the uh, automatic tensioner. Uh, let me grab the uh, Baker one. And there's the Baker one that I'm going to replace it with. So it'll bolt in the same location. It just has this back piece that comes up and it has little serrated teeth so you set the preload on it and uh, I'll, go through the, I'll go through the assembly on that and show you how to set that up when it cools off. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cool while I clean the cover. Um, doesn't look like any gasket material or anything stuck so um, some people will reuse these primary cover gaskets. Um, that's an option if you want to. I, uh, I know, they are spendy, but shit, what on a Harley isn't. So I uh, don't like to um, reuse them just because fear of having a leak down the road. Um, I never have reused them. I know people have, and some leak, some don't. I just don't want to risk it. So I got I got a new gasket. New derby cover gasket, so um, and you can see here's the Screaming Eagle compensator. They look completely different from the other ones, from the from the pre 2011 or the pre pre 2010 CVOs. This one here has the uh, compensator sprocket behind, and you can tell because it has Belleville washers and a thrust washer. So that's how you can kind of tell the difference between the Screaming Eagle version and the other and the old style so everything looks good in here clutches look decent a little bit i've looked at them so um okay i'll go ahead and clean some covers okay so it's cooled off enough now um i went ahead and before i had about a quarter of an inch because i had one and an eighth between the chain and the under underside and when i tried to slack it i'd get about one and three eighths so about a quarter of an inch after it cooled off it didn't really change much um so it the chain is still too tight it's well well outside that five eighths to seven eighths range and like i mentioned again it's 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 problematic on these big twins after 07 when they went to the uh um auto chain adjusters i'm not a big fan of them on a lighter bike maybe not quite as uh, uh high power a high output, high torque engine, you, can, so you, you might be able to get away with it, but what I've found is on any of the bigger engines, the, the 96 so-so, but the 103s, especially the 110s, and on, a, on the bigger bikes, the touring bikes, and your street glides, your road kings, your uh, your ultras and so forth, then every one I've pulled apart, that changes. So as I was saying, some of these I've had them so tight that I can't even get the auto adjuster to release, and I've had to pull the whole primary and everything apart to get them out. Um, <coughs> so, uh, keep that in mind. This generally what you can do is just take a screwdriver and lift up underneath the front of the shoe, and uh, then take a 
well, I call my 11th finger, my, your little pocket screwdriver, and there's a, there's a chamfer on the back of the uh, sliding ratcheting mechanism. You can pick it up, so basically what you do is you pick it up out of those, those teeth, out of those splines, and, it, and push it back. And then hold it down, put a zip tie in through there, and that will give you enough slack where you can go ahead and pull it out. So, um, I, I can't remember how much in depth I talked about the compensator. You can tell by the looks of them, uh, the other ones just have a nut that goes in, into, the, into it, and it has more of a closed off primary pulley with just some little holes in it. This one, the, the, the Screaming Eagle version, has um, see, a stack, has a stack of Belleville washers stacking in behind it. It should be three sets from, from large to small. So you're going to have three sets, and what a Belleville washer is, is basically it's a, it's a concave, two concave washers, and when you put them together, it, 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 like, it's like two discs putting together, and then when you, when you tighten them down, they flex, and that's what gives them that, that, that spring or that, that preload. So there's three sets of those going from large to, to actually a little bit about the same size as the sprocket down to smaller size. Then you put on the uh, inner part, which is three ramps, and then you put the uh, sprocket on, and then there's a Torrington-style thrust bearing out here on the outer end, a uh, 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 inner, ba inner bearing that goes in, and then you have a number 70 Torx, um, is what's required to put this inner bolt in. When you put those on, you want to torque those down. I think they're like 100 foot-pounds. Back them off, and then you go to 170. So um, if you're going to do that, and you're going to do this project, make sure you get a T70 Torx bit and you're ready for it. Um, it's a pretty straightforward uh, process. I do it a little differently. When, when I, and I'm cutting it off track here, but when you're talking about these screaming needle compensators, putting them on a um, bike that does not already have it, you need to change the, comes with the rotor, the new rotor for the ignition comes in the kit as well. And what a lot of dealerships, what a lot of guys are doing is because the rotor, you cannot get out past this outer cover. They, they'll take and wrap rags and everything down around here once you get the primary out of the way and go in and grind for about here to here and it just needs a little relief. They'll go in and grind that and then you can get that rotor out. Personally, I don't like to do that. I don't like to put metal shavings in somewhere like that that I don't have to. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. You're talking two bolts up here to pull your starter motor loose. And I believe you've only got about five. Yeah, I think there's only like five bolts and your inner primary is off. So I prefer to do it that way. Um, you, got, you do have to change the gasket back here, but that's not that big a deal. Like I said, five bolts, two bolts for your starter, and your inner primary is off and then you can go ahead and pull your rotor and everything and you don't have to worry about getting metal shavings and stuff through there. That's the way I prefer to do them. I, I'm not saying the other way is a bad way, it's just I don't, I don't like to do it that way. Personal preference, um, and whether it be my bike or a client's bike, I've been, pull, I, I've been pulling the, the, the inner primary. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this shoe off now. Um, and then we can uh, move on doing the upgrade. Again, like I mentioned before, um, on, a, on a lighter bike, maybe something that's not quite beefed up, uh, you know, not, not the engine's not, doesn't have many performance mods, you can probably get away with the primary, the self-adjusting primary, even though I'm not a big fan of them. I've replaced them on, on everything I've done, um, but I haven't noticed on the lighter bikes, the Dynas, you know, those. I haven't noticed as big a problem with the chains being too tight. But on the bigger motors, the bigger bikes, I think it's that aggressive shifting and, and the weight, to be honest with you, because as you're accelerating, that's pulling this top part tight, well, the bottom side's slapped. So on hard accelerations on a heavier, on a lighter, or excuse me, on a harder acceleration on a lighter bike, it's gonna move the bike out quicker, and so you're, you're less likely to get slack on this lower, uh, non-tension side of the of the uh, chain 
on a heavier bike, you've got a lot more mass to get going. So, especially with a beefed up motor, and this, this 110 cubic inch is, is you know, the high output. So, it's, it, it's, it's pulling harder, and you're trying to move more weight, which is the worst of both worlds, as far as this condition. I'm not saying horsepower is bad, <laughs> I'm just, or torque. I'm just saying that you, you, you've, you've gotten to the worst side of the scenario here, which slacks that bottom side and allows that to jump up a tooth, or possibly two. Now, also the reverse is, in, is, is the same. On hard decelerations, you're doing the same thing. The engine's, uh, engine's RPM's up here, you got the weight of the bike trying to come down, and it maps the engine, and it, does, it slacks this as well. So aggressive up or down shifts will cause this to possibly ratchet up more than it's supposed to. And that's where you get that tight chain. So, um, it, and then you couple that with a, uh, with a heavier bike and you couple that with a higher output motor and you just, you know, you've got, you've got the perfect recipe there for too tight of a chain. Too tight, tight of a chain is gonna cause a, aggressive wear on your, on, your, on your cases, your chain, your bearings, your, your sprockets, it's just, too, it's just too much um, stress in, in, on everything. So I like to put them back to where Harley has been saying for specs for decades, and that's just the 5 8 to 7 8 And it, it, it quiets the chain case down. It um, smooth, smoother shifts, believe it or not. Um, if you have that pesky problem of, trying to, of having a hard time finding a neutral, that's part of it because it's, it, doesn't get, it, doesn't, it doesn't relax that. Uh, that input on your transmission, it's always preloading it. Even with even with it in even with the clutch in, there's still that viscous coupling there. And with too tight of a chain, it can cause that. So um, it's just a good idea to, to go back to the manual gestures. Again, that's just my opinion. I'm not telling you to go out and do that, but if you want the quietest, most reliability out of your primary system, I, I, I like the uh, manual gestures. So let me go ahead and open the other one up and kind of wipe things down, clean things up here a little bit, and we'll uh, install the Baker, the Baker Attitude. All right, so I got the uh, the OEM tensioner auto adjuster out, and I'm going to put the uh, um, new Baker Attitude adjuster in. Um, I have not had the greatest luck trying to fish these in from behind. If you've got a chain that's fairly worn, and so you've got some side, a little more side to side movement out of it. I have seen or heard of people been able to slip those in from behind. I have not been that lucky, so I generally end up pulling at least the primary loose enough to get it out, um, uh, enough to get that in behind. So you want to take your snap ring off. Now, if you've got a, 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 a if you have a non-hydraulic clutch, you're going to have your uh, push rod here. You're going to want to jet, take the jam nut and everything loose on, and then pull. Your snap ring. This is a hydraulic clutch, so just pull the snap ring out, and then get your little screwdriver, little eleventh finger, in there, and pull the clutch push rod out. That will expose the bolt back here. Um, so I can't remember if that's one and a quarter or one and three sixteenths. Okay, it's one and three sixteenths. Now this is going to have a, a left-handed thread. So you will actually go clockwise to release it. And it will have Loctite on it. So remember that for reassembly purposes. So let's uh, set that aside. Now the front, it, now if generally, I can't remember, I want to say it's like a 15, 16 or maybe 7 8 on the old style. On the Screaming Eagle, um, it's actually a T70, T70 torque. Also, with that being said, I'm going to grab my handy dandy little homemade tool here for locking the uh, primary assembly.
general, um, generous application of Loctite as well. But it actually came out better than some. So. Oh yeah, plenty of Loctite on that bad boy. So we're going to clean that up as well. And slip this out and off. Just far enough to Now, when you go to put this back on, just like if you was putting this on for the first time, there's, there's three sets of Belleville washers back there, starting from large to small. Make certain that that inner one doesn't drop in behind. So just make sure that it's all up in place there on that center sliding. Okay, so I've got these um, ready. I'm going to put just a little bit of uh, 242 Loctite on each one of these for the uh, chain tensioner. Okay, let's put a little bit of 242 on each one of those. tensioner back in just behind there. I've got the uh, primary slid back into place. So let's uh Spec in the baker calls for 220 inch pounds, which is about 18 foot pounds. So I'm going to go first off here at about 10. Then go up to 18. Okay, that's torqued in place. Now I'm going to grab the uh, uh, put the uh, primary back together there. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, I already got my 271 Loctite out, so I'm going to put some on the clutch hub nut. Remember, this is the opposite rotation, so you're going to go left to thread that in. Grab a uh, speeder here, real quick. Stop putting that on. I'm not going to put that on the impact.
this nut gets torqued to, I believe it's like 70, 70 to 80, 70 to 80 foot pounds on that one. So let me uh, go half inch torque wrench. Go ahead and run this this one here is the uh, one for the compensator so this one goes run in um, to 100 foot pounds and back off I think it's like quarter to half a turn and then you tighten it to 170 foot pounds see how it wants to keep ramping up and pulling uh, the uh, front drive, the primary, the crank sprocket off. I'm going to put it on first. Okay. Now we'll lock. Okay, there's the 170 on that one. Now this one here, I think what calls for 60, or excuse me, 70 to 80 foot pounds on that one. So I'm gonna go to the high side at 80 on that one. Okay. be done with my uh, primary locking device, primary chain, primary chain locking apparatus. So next is going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the uh, put the uh, clutch push rod in real quick. Okay, so primaries back together. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, grab the it looks like a 9 16 and I'm actually going to snug that up just a little bit so that I can make my adjustment. 
All right, and we are going for an adjustment of five eighths to seven eighths in the slat or in the cold condition. That's a little too much. That's I've got, I've got almost an inch there. So we go up one more. Tooth. This is looking more like it. One and three, looks like one and three eighths to three quarter. So three eighths and a quarter is going to be, it's going to be five eighths. So we should be, uh, should be right in the money there. check my math there. So yeah, we're at one and about a 10, 10 pound force pull down on it. We're going to find a spot here where I'm getting equal increment. Okay, there's one three eighths. Same spot is three quarters, so it'll be a quarter. So if we go three quarter, there's a quarter, there's another quarter, and five eighths. We're right there, five eighths. Okay, so now I need to lock this bolt down. I'm going to double check the spec on that one because I cannot remember. I want to say it's going to be in the 20, 20 to 25 foot pound range. Let me double check. Okay, that nylock gets tightened down to 21 to 29 foot pounds. So I'm going to torque that to about 28. of the primary reinstallation. So I've got my uh, compensator or crankshaft bolt tightened. I've got my new Baker Attitude chain tensioner in. These are torqued in place. The nut's set. The chain tension's tightened. The clutch hub nut is tightened at 80 foot-pounds. Snap rings all put back in. That is all ready to uh, reassemble. So I think I'm going to uh, clean the cover really quick now, get my gasket ready, and probably put the drain plugs back in for the engine and the uh, transmission. And so I'll do that off camera, you don't need to see me at the solvent tank clean the parts. Okay, so I went ahead and double checked everything off camera, make sure uh, um, everything was torqued properly, make sure I didn't, just make sure I didn't forget anything. Sometimes I get talking and I'm not used to talking when I'm doing these, so. I want to make sure I had everything uh, torqued properly. 
So I got my new gasket. Got the primary cover cleaned. And I'm going to uh, start a couple of bolts here just to hold the primary on. Service manual calls for a little bit of uh, 242, 243 blue Loctite on these screws. So I'm going to put, hold, holding your outer primary on, so I'm going to go ahead and put those on. And remember, there's some long ones and some short ones. So you just want to make sure you have everything, uh, all of them in the proper holes. So you should have four long ones that go around the front and the bottom here of the, uh, the crankcase. And then the other, I believe there's nine of them, go on the remainder. So let's this, on. this is one I've got to pull back out and put some Loctite on because it doesn't, that was the one I put in just to hold it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the one next to it in. Before I forget or get confused, I'll pull that one back out. Put a little bit on. Reinstall it. Go down until it just goes on to the dowels. And I won't bore you with all this. I'll go ahead and finish putting these in. And then they get torqued to uh, 108 to 120 inch pounds. So I'll uh, go ahead and get to that point. Okay, I've been around the first primary time here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go around the last time here. So again, now think whenever you torque these, you want to start in the middle and go top, bottom, and work your way out. Think of it as your uh, if you're straightening a, a, a blanket on a bed or something, or you wouldn't want to start one side and just push it because it'll wrinkle up in the middle. So you want to start in the middle and go the outer end. So same thing here, top, bottom work, and outer path. So we'll uh, start here at the bottom. Drop. And come down. You keep working your way from the center outward. And this goes for pretty much anything. It doesn't matter whether you're talking a primary cover or you're talking a, a cylinder head on a small block Chevy. You always want to start at the middle and work your way out. done. Go ahead and uh, turn my torque wrench off. I got one more drain plug to put back in and that's under here, the primary. So um, you want to pull, you always want to replace these O-rings. Some people will reuse them. I've found that they usually get, will get flattened out. So I just usually take a small uh, turk curve pick and just get underneath it. Pull the old, yeah, you can see it, didn't, it looked good from me. Let me see that, it looked good from below, but boy, you can see it sure, sure uh, cracked and chewed oh, yeah. out. Silk Glide just keeps the O ring from tearing when you put it in. So go ahead and thread it in. And then this gets torqued between uh, like 14 and 21 foot pounds, I believe. So I usually, I usually tighten, torque them to 20, 20 foot pounds.
said. Felt like it was getting close, but it wasn't uh, clicking. So, okay, the, all my drain plugs are now installed, and I am ready to uh, start to add fluids. So, let me uh, grab a funnel and a primary fluid first, and I get that from this side. Oh, one other thing I'm going to do is I, uh, I have all these pretty little covers that go over all the heads of all my bolts, so I'll uh, hurry and put those back on. Probably off camera, you don't need to see that. I just don't like the looks of these. I mean, they are stainless socket head cap screws, but I just don't like the looks of them, so I, I go through and put these nice uh, covers on everything. So I'll go ahead and put those on, get the cover a good wipe down real quick before I put floorboards and stuff on too, I have fingerprints and stuff all over it. I've got all my little chrome covers on all my bolt heads, driver floorboard on. Um, I've got a uh, funnel in here. Now the book calls for 38 ounces, if you if, if what they call wet, or 45 ounces dry. Um, this is gonna be closer to 45 because I did have the primary off. Um, granted the chain, clutches, stuff like that weren't 100% dry, so I'm probably gonna be somewhere in the middle. Usually if you just pull the drain plug and you're just doing a service, you're looking at about 38 ounces. Um, but where I had this off, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a little bit more than that. So, I use the uh, Formula Plus, Harley Davidson Formula Plus on the primary. I had good luck with this. Um, it runs nice and quiet. It's actually um, uh, just really good, really good fluid. So I'm going to go ahead and dump a cord in here, and then I'm going to creep up. And what you want is you want the fluid, bike standing up vertical, um, or so level, you want the oil just to the bottom side of the clutch basket. So I'm going to go ahead and dump. I know it's going to be more than a quart, so I'm going to go ahead and dump a quart in for starters, and then I'll creep up on it with, uh, I've got a quart that's um, partially open from a couple other bikes that I've done, so I'll just use that one and uh, come up to level. They don't give you a very big, there is a little notch down here in the primary cover for a small funnel, but it's not a very big hole, so you don't want to fill it up too fast anyway, because you want to you want to fill it from the bottom up. If you start dumping it in too fast, you can actually trap a little bit of air down in there, but you may not notice it until actually the dry system cycling. So it's probably by design that they make it to where you can only fill it a little bit at a time. All right, so I ended up using um, full quart and about four ounces. Um, of this open bottle of Formula Plus that I had. So, uh, what, what is that, about 42 ounces is where I ended up at. So, I uh, figured it would be somewhere in the middle there. And I'm right, you don't want to overfill these, but I'm, because I'm, I'm right at the bottom of the clutch basket. So I'm just kissing the bottom of the clutch basket. Uh, much more than that, you're going to create cavitation up area up in there. I mean, you want the, the ring gear. Even, even I've, I've seen people just put a cord in and call it good. You're not going to, I mean, I don't think you'll hurt anything. I like, maybe it's my OCD, but I want to be dead nuts on. A cord in there is still going to be well up into that ring gear that's going to sling that oil around its chain and everything. So a cord, you'd probably be fine, but I, so I usually try to get it right to the bottom of that clutch get, uh, basket. So now that that part's done, I'll go ahead and install my derby cover so I can put my rear floorboard, passenger floorboard on. And just take your new gasket and put it down in the... You want to make sure you get this down all the way into the groove. You don't want to uh, fold it over. I've, I've actually I pulled one apart and the only thing I can say is it's probably a good thing that the, fold, the folded over section was up on the top and not the bottom. But yeah, you want to make sure that that's, they've got little wide dimples all the way around the gasket. So you just want to make sure you get those put, pressed down in there good. Evenly disperse the gasket around it. And then, um, I think these are, I don't remember, these are a 27 Torx bit. So, go ahead and... Start it and make sure this is a plain cover, so the orientation is pretty uh, set on it. If you've got a, one that has a, 
you know, that's a custom derby cover. Make sure you put it on the correct orientation. Shouldn't have to say that, but see all kinds of weird things out there. So go ahead and uh, run this in to where it just uh, makes contact. And then these get torqued, I believe, 84 to Oh, what, 84 to 108 um, inch pounds. So I'll set these, I'll go in and pull it down to uh, probably about 75 inch pounds to start with. And then I'll creep up to the 108, so. going a crisscross, it's like you're putting a wheel on a vehicle, just going a crisscross pattern. There's five of these, so just you know, doing a star pattern. Okay, and then I'm going to go up to the 108. And final torque. Love before I put my passenger floorboard on, get all my grimy fingerprints off of it, make it look like somebody would give a shit about what they were doing here, huh? All right, now grab my passenger floorboard. And last but not least, my little chrome cover hides that one. Actually, I'm going to have to put a little dab of RTV, clear RTV on that one to hold that one on. So, and then that one's done. Got any fingerprints all over everything here. All right, so let me... Uh, Go ahead and go around the other side and we'll put engine oil and we get everything on this side of the bike's done. Oh, for those that have been paying attention, um, you'll notice that I didn't show changing the oil filter on the engine. I am changing engine oil, so I don't want to get beat up, but I did that off camera. So it has a new oil filter on it. I put the, uh, the Harley Davidson filter on there, the chrome one. So. Um, it, had, it does have an oil filter, new oil filter on it, so uh, rest assured, no need to uh, jump on me about forgetting to change oil filter. It does have a new oil filter on it, so I just did that off camera. If you see, if you see one oil filter being changed, you see them all. So um, I'm going to put a little bit of RTV on this cap and bring the camera on the other side and fill the tranny and the engine oil, and uh, she's done like dinner. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and 
my son's bike and uh, get it off the lift, double check the oil on the jiffy stand, on the side on the kickstand, and then take it for a ride. Okay, so I just got back from a test ride. Um, bike's running flawlessly, so I just double check my fluids and put the other half of that cord in, so I'm set at four quarts now. It's right on full hot. Um, it's successful. I can hit neutral every time now, so the shifts feel a little better, which I think that's more fluid related than it is uh, chain, but the neutral I believe is more chain. The primary just sounds happier. I could hear it a little more than I like before, and now it's now all you hear is the the, the Harley Thunder, that, that big 110 cubic inch engine. So it bike just seems happier. Maybe some of that's the placebo effect. I'm sure there is some of that, but to my ear and my butt, it just feels and sounds um, happier. So I'm happy. I guess that's all that matters, right? Um, anyway, so I appreciate you watching, and I hope this was informative, hope it was helpful, and I just wanted to welcome a new uh, bike to our stable here. So. I uh, expect to see many happy long miles on this bike with the wife and I. And uh, speaking of which, it's uh, still Saturday morning. Beautiful Saturday outside, low 80s, blue sky, bike shined up, tools are put away, shops cleaned up. I don't have anything pressing going on for, for uh, paying jobs right now. So, you know what? I think I'm going to grab the wife and go for a ride. So. Um, thanks for watching and get out there and ride. Uh, if you like the videos, please like them and comment on them. Uh, if there's any more content that you'd like to see, please let me know. And uh, I hope it's hope, I hope you enjoy the videos. Thank you.